Okay, so the way that I'm going to do this series is I'm going to first give an explanation of, of how the family school became the family school, if you know what I mean, because it all stems from somewhere, right? Um, I'm also going to tell stories of the, the alumni that have died, um, memories with them if they were in my class. Um, but I'm going to start at the beginning, right? So that we have a understanding of exactly what these programs are. So the family school uh, started as a uh, place for teenagers to go. Ultimately, it was like a like a group home, right? And when their enrollment became too high, they had to then transfer to a therapeutic boarding school. However, before the family school was the family school, right? There was East Ridge, okay? A lot of the staff from the family school came from East Ridge, who's belief system was largely based on the cult synonym. There's a lot of research there. If you want to go and look it up, you, you're more than welcome to. Uh, however, I'm not going to get into all that. So a lot of the staff, teachers included, um, were graduates of this program, Eastridge, which was very culty, right? Um, they did not necessarily have, I think I can only really remember like one or two teachers having actual certifications to be teachers to be leading these classes, right? Most of them were hardcore uh, people that practiced AA, right? So most of these programs, right, rely on operant conditioning, right? What is operant conditioning? Operant conditioning is a reward system where if a behavior is positive, it is then rewarded with positivity. If a behavior is negative, you're going to use negative reinforcement, right? That doesn't work. Uh, in my experience, it does not work, right? So what do you have? You have uh, a group of children, teenagers, that are experiencing difficulty in their formative years, right? The school would reward people that fall, fell in line and, and followed the rules with outings with their family, stuff like that, right? Negative behaviors, which could be as minor as making eye contact with a boy in the school would be rewarded negatively, right? The family school, I I'm, I'm going to focus on that because that's really the only experience that I can give to be fact, right? Um, they had, most of these programs do sort of, um, I know Daytop calls them haircuts. The family school called them table topics, right? And, and if a student was taking part in something negative, they were then brought up to stand up in front of their family and verbally attacked. That's the best way that I can describe it, right? Um, there was a heavy emphasis on sexuality, right? Um, or very Freudian type behavior, if you know what I mean. So the family school had this staff that was um, culty, right? Outright culty. Um, they were also, when I was there, there was only four families. Um, the, the student population was broken up into sections, right? Where each family had about 20 to 30 kids and six to eight staff members that were in charge of that family. You know what I'm saying? Um, our parents spent most of the time, our parents spent a shit ton of money for us to be abused, right? Um, what the family school was really good at was keeping students in line, right? Um, with a hierarchy, right? So there were students that were trusted and they gave tours to parents. They knew, staff knew they weren't gonna say what was going on at the school, right? Because so, they had to keep up this appearance and, and spread the propaganda of, of they were saving lives when in reality, they were absolutely destroying them. They had, the staff had like their favorite students. I was defiant, if you could even imagine that, right? So I spent a lot of time in the corner. Um, they had really severe work sanctions. And in upstate New York, in the winter, there are feet of snow out there, okay? Feet of snow. Um, they would have kids on like shoveling work sanctions, just moving rocks from one location to another. Um, the work sanctions got pretty severe. So I do imagine that some students were afraid of um, that type of behavior. I wasn't necessarily afraid of it. Um, 
I ran away successfully uh, when I was, uh, I was probably there for about 10, 11 months. Um, there was no access to CPS. Um, all of your incoming and outgoing mail was monitored. Your phone calls were monitored. Um, there was never a time that you felt safe enough to go to another student to talk about like the way that you were really feeling about the situation that y'all were in because you feared the punishment that would come with that. I just recently found out that these programs, the ones that are around now, are funded sometimes by Medicaid or like state um, you know, grants, which is wild to me because that should not be allowed. Um, my mom paid for me to, to go to this school and I stayed there for 18 months and I had a GED. I graduated with a GED because I was so desperate to get away from um, the abuse that was going on around you, seeing students getting punched in the face. So they, they did restrain you and like I normally got restrained at like table topics and I always wondered, I actually said this to a reporter like last year, I said, where were the videotapes, right? Because they always videotaped for staff protection, right? Where are those videotapes? Because the school no longer exists, right? And and New York opens up its statute of limitations on sexual assaults, being able to uh, a look back is what they called it. And the school and employees have multiple cases that have either one just opened in November, but there were students sexually assaulted. The priest is another frequent um, person that is being you know, sued. Uh, another one was an admitted sex addict. Um, and when I got there, he lived above my dorm. This man was not in any way, shape or form normal. The fact that he would discuss his um, addictions, if you know what I mean, with children was just wild, wildly inappropriate, right? And looking back, you, you see it all, right? But when you're there, it, it's kind of just like, it's like a fog, right? You, like you can't even fathom that this is reality. A lot of people ask me about like staff, right? Um, how did the staff members sit there and, and just comply, right? Because if I went to a new job and they wanted me to wrap a kid up in a blanket with duct tape and stick them in an old library, I would look at them like they were crazy, right? But in this type of setting, they chose employees that were already like indoctrinated, right? So they really believed that they were doing the right thing, which I know is crazy, but you have to like think of like that cult-like mentality. They are completely brainwashed. Um, there has been some staff that have come and, and apologized for their behavior. Students too, like students that have had to restrain me, right? And and you got to remember that they're just doing what they got to do to survive, right? So so like you don't feel, I didn't, I, I can only speak for myself, like I didn't feel any kind of way towards them because they were doing what they had to do to get by. And different people have different uh, coping mechanisms, right? Like they have different levels of what they can and can't handle. You follow me? And and I, I don't want anybody to feel guilty or, or that way, especially because the school does have such a high death rate, right? Which is wild, but we'll get into other stuff in other videos.